When it comes to fighting climate change, renewable energy has proven to be one of our greatest weapons. But if you love wind and solar, odds are you've probably heard comments like, well, what happens when the sun goes down or the wind doesn't blow? And that's pretty annoying because it's a fair point. How do we bridge the gap between the time natural energy is produced and the times when energy is in higher demand? Chemical battery storage has provided some solution, but they come with their own environmental baggage. What if we could store all that beautiful, clean energy without batteries? And what if the way to do it wasn't some futuristic innovation, but the result of some of the oldest technology in human history? We thought that deserved a deeper dive here on 2-Bit Da Vinci. Special thanks to Masterworks for sponsoring this video. Use our link in the description and add art to your investment portfolio. First, let's talk about energy. And remember, this is a 10 minute video on YouTube. So if we leave some stuff out, I'm sure you'll let us know in the comment section as you always do. So the simplest scientific definition of energy is that it's basically Rihanna. It's the ability to do work, 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 work. Who wrote this script? Energy can exist in different forms, heat, light, motion, just to name a few. And that falls into two categories, potential and kinetic. Energy by nature can't be created or destroyed, but it can be converted from one form to another. In a traditional power plant, the chemical energy in coal or natural gas gets heated to become thermal energy, which boils water to produce steam, which moves turbines, mechanical energy, which turns into electricity, which then goes into your phone's chemical battery, which once again, turns it into electricity so you can watch even more cat videos on YouTube or Tuba Da Vinci videos. I heard those are good. By the way, while you're here, why not turn your potential energy into kinetic energy by hitting that like button, which creates happiness that produces zero emissions. Where a chemical battery uses minerals like lithium to store a charge, mechanical batteries store energy in the form of motion itself, or in the form of potential energy until it's needed. No chemicals, no emissions. Sounds like some kind of Tomorrowland fantasy, right? What if I told you that not only do methods for mechanical energy storage exist right now, but that most of them have been around for decades and some even centuries. One of the most promising ways to store energy actually predates just about every other human-made technology, the flywheel. No, it's not a pair of super groovy rims you might see on a decked out lowrider. It's basically just a wheel on an axle that stores and regulates energy by spinning continuously. Flywheels have been around since at least 4000 BC, debuting in pottery wheels. Today, flywheels exist under the hood of almost every gasoline powered car on the road, regulating the engine's RPMs between shifts of the transmission. Without a flywheel, your engine's RPMs would plummet, resulting in huge herky-jerky motions between gear shifts. The flywheel helps to smooth that out and keep the engine spinning for a little bit longer while the next gear is engaged. When it comes to energy storage, large-scale flywheels have the same basic principles. The mechanical battery consists of a heavy accelerating rotor with a bearing connected to a motor generator. As the wheel accelerates to high speed, all that energy gets stored as motion. Now when you need that energy back, you can turn on a motor that will extract some of that rotational energy of the flywheel to then create electricity and thus slow down. The first instances of flywheels being used for energy storage appeared in the 1830s to power self-propelled torpedoes. In the 1940s, Swiss technology company, or Lycon, hope I'm saying that right, even developed a functional alternative to buses and trolleys using flywheel technology, the gyro bus. And if you'd like us to do a deeper dive into the gyro bus or any other topic, please let us know in the comments. It's fascinating stuff. The long and short of it is, instead of fuel or diesel or electricity, a huge flywheel would be spun up at every stop while passengers loaded and unloaded, and that flywheel energy would be able to propel the bus a couple of miles to the next stop. Fascinating stuff. Today, NASA is exploring flywheel technology in satellites and other applications due to their high energy density, long life, reliability, and efficiency. Compared to other energy storage options, flywheels are among the most energy efficient. Where traditional lead acid cells have energy densities around 30 to 40 watt hours per per kilogram, a flywheel-based battery can reach energy densities three to four times higher at around 100 to 130 watt hours per kilogram, all while being about 90% efficient. On top of that, flywheels are also time resistant. Dr. Mark Flynn, a researcher from the University of Texas, has designed a flywheel system that could theoretically last up to 20 years with continuous usage. While all that sounds great, flywheels are not an entirely foolproof technology. Current technology still requires electricity to accelerate and decelerate flywheels, though fully mechanical options are in development. Flywheels are also prone to mechanical stress and fatigue limits. Newer building materials and technology
technological developments, vacuum chambers, magnetic bearings, and lighter carbon fiber material help offset some of these disadvantages and increase energy efficiency. But that also makes the technology incredibly expensive. But with one of the highest energy density ratings of any current energy storage option, that upfront cost may be worth it in the long run. Before we get back to the show, let me tell you about Masterworks. With Masterworks, you can own fractional shares of iconic art, just like owning a company's stock. With the world the way it is and concerns over inflation, everyone is looking for safe places to store their wealth. Masterworks has a unique algorithm for identifying promising art from emerging artists. After holding it for three to 10 years, they sell it for profit on the secondary market. Did you know that contemporary art has outperformed the S&P 500, gold, and housing in the past 25 years? Using art as a wealth storage tool is nothing new for the very wealthy, but now with Masterworks, it's available to us all. Housing, jobs, the economy are all connected and fall together, but art doesn't play by the same rules. As more people enter the middle class, the demand for fine art will increase. Get rich enough and anyone can buy a yacht, but no amount of money can buy a piece of artwork owned by someone else. The ultimate exclusivity. Use the link in the description to skip the 25,000 plus person waitlist and join masterworks.io to start investing in multi-million dollar artwork today. Next up, another classic making a comeback, the Sterling Generator. Invented by Robert Sterling in 1816 as a rival to the steam engine, this device converts thermal energy into mechanical energy using the cyclical compression and expansion of air or other gases. It begins with an airtight cylinder filled with a working fluid, air, hydrogen, helium. On top of the cylinder is a piston and inside it is a displacer. As the cylinder heats up, the air pressure inside increases. As it moves to the top of the cylinder, it cools, causing the air pressure to drop. The displacer helps move the air inside the chamber, which helps helps move the piston. The two work together to drive each other. Often these components are attached to a flywheel where the thermal energy becomes mechanical. The best news is you can use any heat source, solar, geothermal, biological, or nuclear sources, even waste heat from industrial processes. In 1986, NASA even built one and put it in a Chevrolet Celebrity. Fuel economy was improved 45% and emissions were greatly reduced. Like flywheels, Stirling engines are seeing a bit of a resurgence lately. Swedish energy company Azaleo has developed a system that uses solar thermal collectors to absorb solar energy that then heat an aluminum alloy until it melts, where it is stored as thermal energy. The heat can then power a Stirling generator where it turns back into electricity. If you want to learn more about the Stirling engine, please let us know. We can do an entire episode dedicated to it. And until then, please check out our very good friend Matt Farrell from Undecided on his video, which we'll put a car and a link in the description. He has a fantastic video that goes really deep into the technology. Up next, if you've ever heard of a jackhammer outside your window at 6 a.m., you're familiar with compressed air energy storage. In fact, all pneumatic tools utilize this technology. For this method, compressors pump air into a massive chamber where they build up pressure, up to 1,000 pounds per square inch. Then, when electricity demand is high, the pressurized air can be released to generate electricity through an expansion turbine generator. So where do they store all this air? Turns out, the world is full of caves, crevices, and even old mines stripped of all their material. All these holes are just waiting to be pumped full of air. Not to sound like a broken record, but this idea is nothing new. In fact, all the earliest air pumps were developed in 1661 by philosopher and scientist Robert Boyle. Since the late 1800s, citywide compressed air energy systems have been utilized in cities all over the world, from parts of Paris to Germany, even Buenos Aires. A compressed air energy system is relatively inexpensive to create and can start pumping electricity in about 12 minutes. One drawback, though, is that these types of systems don't have the best efficiency track record. As all that air gets compressed, it heats up. That heat can escape through the walls of the chambers it's stored in. As the air escapes, it cools, which means it needs to be reheated so as not to damage the turbines. So in effect, anytime air is compressed or decompressed, there's a equivalent impact to temperature and air density. And so as a result, those sorts of things have to be controlled. The most advanced systems include methods to redirect the escaping air to warm the air, creating a self-contained system. But even under optimal conditions, compression batteries only reach about 70% efficiency. The last option we'll look at is the 
hydroelectric storage. Yet another decades old invention, hydroelectric power, first appeared in Switzerland in 1907 at the Engelweyer power facility near Schaffhausen, Switzerland. Basically, this system uses huge amounts of water and the power of gravity. Pumps transfer water from a lower elevation to a higher elevation, where it is held behind a dam. Then, when the power demand increases, the floodgates open and all the dam water flows through the turbines. Then it gets pumped back uphill and the process starts all over again. Sounds pretty damn good to me. Some systems even include reversible pump turbines, killing two birds with one stone. Or saving two birds with one turbine? Of all the options on this list, pump energy storage is by far the largest capacity form of grid energy storage available. It currently accounts for over 95% of all active tracked storage installations worldwide. And there's a reason why it's so popular. The round trip efficiency of PSH generally varies between 70 and 80%, though some sources have claimed upwards of 87% efficiency. Not quite the efficiency levels of chemical batteries, but a far easier to scale solution. The main disadvantage of pump stored hydro is the specific environmental need required, both high elevation and tons of water. Suitable sites tend to be natural, beautiful locations, making PSH susceptible to social and ecological issues. Many recently proposed projects, at least in the US, avoid highly sensitive or scenic areas, and some propose to take advantage of brownfield locations such as disused mines. The reality is that the solution to renewable energy storage will involve some combination of each of these options. But with these and other solutions on the horizon, green energy becomes an increasingly viable alternative to fossil fuel. If nothing else, these technologies prove that sometimes the best path forward is backward. So that is a look at some alternative forms of energy storage. Basically, the idea is if you can take energy now and hold its potential in some state for a future use. So as we create more energy from solar and wind, I think we're going to see in lockstep the development and rollout of all these various forms of energy storage. That's pretty exciting. Thank you so much for watching. A huge shout out to all of our patrons on Patreon and to all of our YouTube channel members. You guys are what make this show possible and help us stay afloat and independent. So if you want to be a rock star supporter of this show, please consider joining us on Patreon or hit that join button on YouTube to become a channel member. Either way, you'll have tons of perks like joining our community on Discord to chat about future videos. So until next time, just remember the future is going to be awesome. I'm Ricky, and this is Tupa Da Vinci.